I'm upset by it and I'm hurt by it and I feel betrayed by it. Are they still paying you? Yeah, they're still paying me. I want to be at the RNC. I want to see Patricia McCoskey. I want to scream for the GOP. I want to sit with Dan Poncino. I want to show the American flag. Hanks behind the toilet in Grandma's basement. I want to ask if this will be my dad. I want to change my name to Nick Poncino. I want to tell about the man in the stairs. He kind of looks like Dan Bongino. Grandma tries to tell me not to go down there. But I would be safe with Dan Bongino. I want to be at the RNC. I want to be like Dan paradigm of absolute control and that's why we're just out here doing simple things pointing out that we're meant to be in nature and be natural and this is where we find the source that god made to transcend the new world order and that's why they want to try to keep us out of it i'm angry i've had enough of these people i'm tired of being watching Fox News as I worked out this morning. I'm an incel myself, so do you know what the incel is? Involuntary celibate. It's like a community of people on the internet who can't get laid, and some of them go out and, like, kill people, like Elliot Roger. I'm not saying... I'm cringing okay. right now. I'll explain it later. Uh, the virgin is the incel. Uh, involuntarily celibate, who never gets laid. He's like unable to get laid. He's very nerdy. He has terrible posture. And that would be someone uh, that would be considered a dad. Holy shit, dude!
This is a short ad break by Hassan Piker. I want you to redistribute the wealth to Mall Brawl by order of Communist Turkey. Follow his Twitch streams at Mall Brawl. Fire, dude. <laughs> it's cool. There's, there's like eight sinks, so. I love crap. Wait, what the heck, bro? What this? What that? What is this? I, I said I would clap the fucking shit out of Ben Shapiro's ass cheeks, dude. Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. I'm just kidding. Holy shit, dude. Ray is here with us today. You know, I almost don't want to even give this young Turk, uh, George Soros-funded um, creature, any attention, but she wants it, she needs to get it. Her name is Ray Vaughn. Uh... Certified freak, seven days a week. <laughs> I love Dave Rubin. <laughs> Wet-ass pussy, make that pull-out game weak. I read his book. <laughs> Fuck you, you're fucking insane. You are truly an inspiration to all who are here today and all of our great country. Thank you, Ray, for being with us. Thank you. This is a deranged pervert. Thank you. And now you're just turning to fucking ad hominems because you literally can't back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Fuck it up. Back it up. Fuck it up. It's just skin. Ooh, fuck it up. Back it up. Back it up. Fuck it up. And it's not good. Ooh, fuck it up. Fuck it up. Back it up. Fuck it up. Penises, they're the worst. Ooh, fuck it up. Back it up. Back it up. Fuck it up. Penises are not the worst. Penises are great. mode isn't there a way to intro yourself without having to hear trump's voice absolutely fucking not that is my favorite part of the intro <laughs> hi everybody uh, i know i'm starting a little bit early so i know i'm probably gonna have less viewers re you're not gonna finish the sister wives just so you know i know who you don't like re reality television so if you want to finish the main show it's all good hi juniper um but yeah, so I'm going on Doomed with Matt Binder at eight, my time, nine Eastern. So I wanted to get a stream in before that happens to see if I can't get my sub goal finished. Um, and I also really want to finish watching this fucking Sister Wise video and I didn't want to not stream. So I figured I would just do it a little bit early. I just left the main show. Jank is ranting. Matt Binder, hell yeah. Matt Binder is great. Um, I, did they talk about the deep fake porn yet? I, because I know that they were going i have the document i can see the stories that they they're doing so i can like i know that they're gonna talk about it <laughs> so i'm sorry if i gave that away for anyone who was like you know waiting to see the stories well they talked about tim pool i think Judy talked asked people not to talk about it let me look at the doc right now i wonder if they'll get mad bye re if i'm in it probably not i'm not sure i just looked it won't touch anything Oh, no, they are talking about it, but not for a little bit. And my tweet is in the document. Jeez. 
I know Cutie asked people not to talk about it, but it's news. And I don't think her name is in the story as they're covering it. And I, res- I, I they're not covering the name of the website, which I think is what's doing real harm. I understand her position, but like as somebody who has been the victim of revenge porn, not talking about it doesn't solve the problem and it doesn't help bring awareness to how victims can get justice, which I think is important to do and needs to be done. Site is now down. Thank fucking God. It's illegal in California. It's literally, it's illegal in California. And I think the other state is Virginia, where it's classified the exact same as revenge porn. And I'm, I'm going to talk about it on Binder show later. I'm sure a lot of you will go over there and watch that when I'm done streaming. So I, I won't get too bogged down in the details. And when I talk about it on his show, I'm not going to talk about the names of the streamers affected aside from Atrioc, but like a lot of people have been trying to bring awareness to this issue who have been victims of this issue for a very long time. And there's, I'm sorry, there's just not a better time than when people are talking about it than to, you know, guide people towards the resources for the victims of it. And to just raise awareness about how much real world harm this causes. I mean, just imagine Googling your name and porn that you never took a part of, you were never a part of creating, is out there of you. That stops you from getting jobs. If you're a streamer, it can really impact brand sponsorships, which is a big way streamers get paid. Okay, man, to talk about Jorginho. You pick is non-consenting. It is, and uh, and what what you'll and people keep saying this is hyperbolic. But if you are not, you've not experienced this problem. I really wish people would not try to say this is hyperbolic. A lot of the women who have been the victims of this say that when they see it, it's like getting raped. It feels like they're getting raped. And these are people who have been raped. So it's, again, I just don't think you can call it hyperbole. Maybe this is just me as someone who's literally zero photos online. But the main thing that bothers me about the situation is he got a third party to do it for him to me that makes it more like sharing leaked nudes whereas if he just set up a custom model for exclusively his own private use i feel like that's way less creepy it's not much different from doing a drawing i mean i think that what you're saying makes sense because it what i keep seeing people saying is like oh you so what is people shouldn't can't think of you while they masturbate like there's no harm happening if there's no harm happening in that case, it's not being created. It's not being distributed. If you're just thinking about someone while you're jerking it, like if then if you can't fathom how that's different than releasing pornographic material of someone who did not consent to have their face in that material, like there's no hope for you. You have you have less intelligence than a fucking worm, like. <laughs> I once had a hookup tell me he had security cams set up on his bed after. I hope that person is in hell. I was going to say I hope they're in jail, but I hope worse. I hope that they are not on this earth. There's a difference between I'm, th- between I'm yanking while thinking about you about X and I'm masturbating to porn I produce with X person's likeness. If you don't find the creepy, there it's creepy, but I think that Cave Dwelling made a good point that like, I mean it's gross. <laughs> Even if you're doing it without distributing it, it's really fucking gross. But like the harm being done isn't nearly the same as distributing it in mass or people being able to find it on the internet, right? Like. It's like, I don't know, if you cut someone's face off out of a picture and put it on the a picture of, like, a bikini model and jerked off to it, like, it's fucking weird. But as long as nobody knows about it, you know, it's probably not that, there's not really harm being done, but when you're creating it and producing it, distributing it online, then they have to live with that. They have to live with the fact that someone can Google their name and then porn afterwards. And there are videos of people having sex with their face on it and all of the ramifications that comes with that and all of the trauma that comes with that. I mean, it's disturbing. And like I said, for them, for a lot of these victims, it's like watching yourself get getting raped. And they say that it feels like they've been raped. It's and people are trying to minimize it. Like it's disgusting. 
I don't understand how you can minimize that. Like if you put, he bought a picture from someone who made fake porn of someone who did not consent. That makes it a commodity. That makes it sharing non-consensual nudes. I make a Queen Liz times Hassan blend dream booth model for my personal wink fantasies. I don't think that's as bad as if I paid someone to create it. Yeah. And not all states, There's, I mean, most don't. Only two states in the U.S. classify it as revenge porn. I said California, and I think it's Virginia. Might be Vermont, but I think it's Virginia. Are the two states that they classify deepfake AI porn the same way they classify um, revenge porn. And you can be put in jail for creating it in those states. I mean, you don't have to create it in those states. If you are selling it to people who live in those states, that's enough. <laughs> you could go to jail in California for creating it or Virginia, even if you don't live there. <laughs> so I'd like to see a lot more. Like I, what I'm trying to say is I understand. And when I talk about it later on Bender show, when there's more people watching, I won't mention cutie because she wants to be excluded from it. But right now is a really good moment because the story has gotten so big because people are talking about it to use this to call for legislative action in Illinois right now there's lots of groups advocating that we met because we have a really strict um revenge porn statute so we, we're advocating for legislators to amend the revenge porn statute to include deep fig AI porn and I think this is a good moment to con to continue that work to highlight that work because it's at the forefront of people's minds. It's a big story. Part of me is kind of cynical. Please help me to understand this. Cynical about what? Like they are creating with AI deep fakes of people's faces who did not consent to be in porn and selling it, which violates their... Mm, I'm, I said I wasn't gonna talk about this too much. I've seen a lot of really stupid takes online about like, Oh, it's probably protected under copyright law because you can't copyright your face. You don't know anything if you think that. <laughs> you don't know a single thing. I get so, like, one of my Achilles heels is when I see someone who's wrong about the law, I can't stop myself from correcting them. It bothers the fuck out of me. You don't need to copyright your face. You already have the exclusive publicity rights to your name <laughs> to some extent. Someone else might have the same name as you. Um, but you do have the exclusive publicity rights to your face, to your likeness, to your image. What they're doing is a violation of your publicity rights, and they can sue for that. Every single person, celebrity or otherwise, has the exclusive publicity rights to their own likeness. That's your face. Someone else can't make money off of it. There's a really uh there's a really famous case about people who were selling t-shirts with Martin Luther King Jr.'s face on them. Uh, and the family sued because it was after he had been murdered. The family sued and they won. Because you can't profit off of someone else's likeness without their express written consent. So I think that's a really interesting avenue that, you know, activists and uh, you know victims of this could explore, but it's expensive because it's not like you know, you have to have a lawyer. You have to have, you have to be able to afford that. You know, it's weird. Weird. I realized that by porn and they felt raped that these were probably not just nudes, but full on getting railed. And that makes it so much worse for whatever reason. Oh, they, I mean, I don't think CGI is the right word, but essentially they take a video, which I think is another interesting Avenue that could be explored for the legal consequences of this. Um, they take actual porn videos and transplant the faces with AI of streamers onto the bodies of the porn stars in the videos. So another way that this could be taken, you know, another, another approach to, you know, trying to get this shut down is the copyright holders for the actual porn video could sue the people using their videos in this way. No, they don't own the rights to the original video, which is why I'm saying they're taking porn off Pornhub and putting people's faces on it. So theoretically, if they're taking porn that's been made by like browsers or companies like that, you know, those companies could sue 
for copyright infringement because it's a they have a copyright over the porn that they've created. So <laughs> that's just another way that it could be approached. I've been thinking about this all day, honestly, like different avenues for people who don't live in states where it's illegal that could be explored, different sorts of lawsuits that could be brought forth to try to address it. It's disgusting. It is vile what's going on. And, you know, there's some survivors groups that are doing really good advocacy. Um, but I mean, it's so, I mean, like, like I said, they felt like they were getting raped watching it. Their face is having sex with someone they never consented to it. And it's being distributed and viewed and sold for money. Yeah, fuck, I thought it was just like shopping someone's face onto nudes. No, it's putting their face onto porn. Just stop watching a particular genre because it involved pestering, even though the actors are playing a role that made me uncomfortable. Yeah, there's a lot of weird shit. I have some friends who are, uh, uh, they work in porn and they're, they're, they've taken a principled stance against doing like a lot of the weird fucking shit that happens in porn. Not like kink stuff, but like offensive things. I saw some people trying to say that I, people are kink shaming the people who watch deep fake AI porn. You should be shamed. Just to be clear, you should be shamed for what you're doing. You are consuming content, paying for content. Even if you're not paying, it's gross. But you are you are consuming content that you know was made without the uh, consent of the individual being part, uh, being depicted in it. You like what other? You must also watch like fucking porn of people who you know were human trafficked or like uh, you know rape porn that isn't portraying a fantasy or you know people playing roles. It's actual rape. Like you know that these people didn't consent to this. Do you just like love looking at fucking? leaked pictures and videos of people that you know didn't consent to have those images out there like you're disturbing your brain should be studied you've got some sort of psychology going on oh hello fellow human hello okay anyway that's my two cents about it I'll talk about it more when I go on uh, Binder's show later. So make sure you're subscribed to Matt Binder on YouTube so you can see that. Um, also, if you have to dip out, can you do me a favor if you want to watch the rest of the stream that you missed? Can you watch it on YouTube instead of on Twitch? Because I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube and it takes a lot and I need a lot more views than I have right now. This is a link to my YouTube channel, by the way. Go subscribe. Also, watch my other videos. They're really good. Seems like I got here at the end of a rant. I do love a rant. Yeah, you did. I was I was ranting about deep fake porn. The Bender Show, but it's so difficult. I actually called in a Bender Show before I was ever doing political commentary, which is so funny to me. <laughs> I talked about that the last time I was on a show. It's so, I don't know, my life has, has changed so drastically over the past couple years. These people who I used to, like, watch and idolize, I'm, like, friendly with now. It's just so bizarre. I miss the previous Tate parts. Thank you. They're good. You gotta watch them. They're funny. But, yeah, if you ever miss a stream, check out my YouTube channel. I upload them all there. Mate, I've got a lot to say about uh, SD porn. I'll talk about it again later on Binder's show, but for now, I really got to get back to the sister wife shit. Partially on topic, but AI porn is pretty solid if you find the polydactyl. <laughs> Yo, the, everyone who is like, what is this? Oh my God, I'm getting so many fucking harassing texts about the election coming up in Chicago. Yesterday while I was streaming, I got one from Nina Turner that made me laugh because <laughs> I'm like, I know her. <laughs> Now I'm getting text bank messages from someone I know. <laughs> I think I mentioned to her the other day that I actually applied for an internship for her campaign. Which is so fun. I don't know. Life is funny. Life is weird.
Mm-hmm. I love pterodactyls. I'm watching this whole time, and finally we are talking about subject I care about. Okay. Cody Brown. So just a refresher, as I switch over to my other camera. <clears throat> Just a refresher on what you missed on last week's episode of Sister Wives. <laughs> no, we um we got through half of this video. There's still a lot more to go. Oh, thank you so much for subbing. It's the Martin. I really appreciate that. So, so far, we covered how he married the wives. We covered the fake, um, we covered the fake persecution that they were suffering. Um we covered why everybody hates Cody. He's nasty. We also covered why everybody hates Robin. She's nasty. They are a team of evil. <laughs> we also talked extensively about how the purpose of Sister Wise was to normalize polygamy, which is so funny because all of his lives, wives except for one left him. So now he's in a monogamous <laughs> marriage. <laughs> so that's where we're at. <laughs> it's good <laughs> it's really good so now we're getting into how they all ended up divorcing him or leaving him so he's still married to the person he was legally married to but he was spiritually married to the 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 three other women and so they spiritually served him with some divorce papers and we're gonna get into how that happened First, we had Christine. Also, just, you know, of course, I mean, she's got a billion fucking subscribe. Oh, I don't subscribe to her. Um, but yeah, everyone sh- sh- check out Cruel World Happy Mind. She makes great videos. Um, and yeah, she put this together. <laughs> Serve D's Cody. Brown confirming her split from Cody Brown last year. Now we have Vanelle Brown confirming her split yes. from Cody. Okay, the- I have to add this context here because some of you weren't here yesterday or some of you may not know um, or have forgotten. Why didn't my sub counter go up? I got a new sub. Huh. Um. Ah. Uh, no, it's still playing my fucking alerts. Okay, how do I skip all these alerts? I don't know how to do it. I think we're good now. Okay, anyway, um, Janelle sold her house to help Robin get, oh, it just went up, to help Robin get uh, her dream home. And then she, Robin is the bitch wife. And then Janelle was forced to move into a fucking trailer. And just one more reminder, Janelle was the primary breadwinner for their family for a long time. She was one of the only ones of them that had a job. And she was forced to live in a trailer on the property that she helped buy for bitch wife. Cody's also a bitch husband, so don't accuse me of sexism. A one-on-one sister wife special we then had mary brown confirming that her and cody are no longer together christine was the first wife to leave cody in november 2021 after more than 25 years together cody and i have grown apart this hot and- mess is so cathartic i mean their marriage was so toxic and like i mentioned this a billion times yesterday I was a original Sister Wives watcher. I started watching from the beginning when I was like 12 or 13. My mom and I would watch it. We'd get snuggled up in her bed and make popcorn and watch Sister Wives every week. Um, uh, What's the premise of the show? So they're Mormons and they're polygamists. So it's four wives and one shitty ass husband um, who only loves one of the wives. So it sort of follows their lives. It's like a reality TV show. Um, and it's just so dramatic. It's just so dramatic. And I've made the difficult decision to leave. Christine wrote on Instagram, we will continue to be a strong presence in each other. But yeah, I think my mom and I were just drawn to it. One, because we love reality TV, but two, because it's like such, and so many people were drawn to it for this reason. It's like such a different lifestyle than we've ever observed, most people have ever observed. So it was fascinating, but I don't think it it had its intended result of like normalizing polygamy. I feel like most people watched it and they were like, this family's fucked up. <laughs> I'm gonna keep watching. <laughs> 
other's lives as we parent our beautiful children and support our wonderful family. At this time, we ask for your grace and kindness as we navigate through this stage within our family. Why are you insisting on holding on to me? I'm why? Reminder that he said earlier that he never loved her ever and he only had sex with her to perform his marital duties and that he never loved her. <laughs> Whoa. This isn't working, Cody. You said it wasn't working too. In his own statement, Cody wrote, Christine's decision to leave comes with a great deal of sadness. We enjoyed many years together and I have a large amount of respect and admiration for her. Although we are moving forward on different paths, we will always remain committed parents. Christine was completely decided. Whatever she'd done over the past 10 or two years, I don't know what it was, but she was completely decided. And where were you? You said you never loved her. I can't, I can't. You fucking said you never even loved her. There should be one wife who is secretly a serial killer, suster wives among us. In denial. A bad marriage is a bad marriage. Everybody expects you to just go and figure it out and fix the marriage. Mm. What if a marriage just isn't fixable? Later, Christine revealed that the decision to leave was largely in part to Cody's relationship with her children. During a December 2022 appearance on the Reality Life with Kate Casey podcast, Christine explained that her kids were disappointed with Cody for years after he failed to spend meaningful time with them. Just a reminder, Christine is the mother of the daughter who is having surgery and Cody didn't fucking go to her surgery. And the daughter, when she was waking up from the anesthesia, kept asking for her dad and he wasn't fucking there. He refused to go so he could be with his other wife, Robin. He's such a piece of shit. And I saw it in their eyes that they didn't really feel like they had a great connection with him. You look back now and, you, and, and, and sort of like the puzzle pieces are kind of fitting together now. Yeah. It was almost like this burden I got lifted and I was like, all right, then. then it's time to move on. Of her choice. I love podcasts that bring on guests that are screaming into a webcam microphone. <laughs> it's like the, the disparity between the, the well curated audio quality of the host and then the guest like... <laughs> Just no sort of setup, no, no good quality. To leave the 26 year marriage, Christine added, you can only sit and wish for so long. You actually have to start making the steps necessary to change that dialogue, to change the situation. While the split initially appeared amicable, Cody later revealed in an episode that his feelings differed. I'm in this sort of weird place where I'm like thinking, I don't want to see Christine ever again. I don't want to think about her. I don't want to drive past this house ever again and mourn this. Such a child. In you have children with her. My God. LOI is healthcare not free at the point of use in the United States. Uh, money in politics. In the season 16 finale of Sister Wives, which aired in February of 2022, Christine contemplated ending her relationship with Cody after he suggested- Season 16, holy crap. Yeah, there was like 18 seasons of the show. It wasn't 18 years though. The show started in 2010. So I was like start, I was like my first year of middle school or something or my last year of elementary school and it started. But yeah. Did they have a romance? I don't want to be toxic, but I want to go back to men not sharing their feelings. At least Cody Brown needs to keep his opinions to himself. His feelings are not valid. That man is a monster. Free relationship. You're blaming me for me being turned off by your behavior. It's so embarrassing. She subsequently. That's abuse. He's such a gaslighter. Him out of her bedroom. The intimate part of our marriage is over. And to be honest, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with staying in a marriage where there's no intimacy. That's not a real marriage. I'm not interested in a half marriage or a partial marriage or whatever we have. So I mean, things the amount of gaslighting and victim blaming Cody does is shocking. He's literally a monster. Which is, they, she was saying earlier that of the in the video that we watched yesterday, 
that the fans never like Cody and for good reason, like immediately people spotted that he is a piece of shit. Even without Robin, you could just tell that these women were, I don't want to say that they were afraid of him, but they were definitely frustrated by him. How long have you been calling it gaslighting? Elmeo? it's gas lamping. Cody and I have been hard for a long time, months ago. We had a conversation. I mean, he just made it very blatantly clear that he said he just wasn't attracted to me anymore and we were not going to have an intimate marriage anymore. We didn't touch. We didn't hold hands. We didn't hug nothing. We had for a long time. So I just told him not to stay in my room anymore. I didn't want him in my space anymore. She drops a bomb on me. She said, don't, I don't want you to stay in my room anymore. You weren't staying there anyway. Please. She, first of all, what is this camera angle? <laughs> How did you achieve this? <laughs> but secondly, you said you were repulsed by her. You wouldn't even touch her. Can't stay long. Just want to say, hey, Ray, anyone who helps the disabled comrade of mine, I heart you forever. You're more charming than Satan. Prettier too. Oh, hi, nerd. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for that sweet message. She's like, my room is a special place to me. And nothing <laughs> Love his forehead. <laughs> what happens there for us? The big one. I'm like... Okay, you know, a lot of people have marriages that are like this. Wasn't well, he only with Christine because she came from a prominent Mormon family? So add Cloud Chaser to his list. That is exactly the case. Yes. She was like the royalty of uh, Mormon polygamy. Man's free marriage. Which also, th that like royal family of polygamy also ended in complete disaster when all of the wives like escaped. <laughs> Nerd, thank you so much for gifting. It felt really good to tell him to not come over. I couldn't with a clear conscience stay married to someone who had favorites and made it known and someone who was breaking my kid's heart. Cody also had what I can only assume was a total temper tantrum on an episode of The Sister Wives where he talks about how he was disgusted with Christine when they first met because of the way she ate nachos and that he was never attracted to her and never loved her and actually found her disgusting. Nacho cheese. I will be honest, I was not attracted to Christine in any kind of physical sense. I mean, I look back in retrospect and I wonder, was that fair? But I can't even look there because we have children together, we have a life together, we have a relationship. You weren't attracted to her in any sense. Yet you married her and had six kids together. Hell is not hell is not a worse enough place for this man. There's got to be hell too or something for him to go to. And we found our sweet spot. So you were not physically attracted to Christine. That's an understatement. You were grossed out by her? I won't say that, but the nachos grossed me out enough to make me go, okay, I'm waiting. How does it feel? All over some nachos? Bro, chill. Chill out. What the fuck are you talking about? And then to have the gall to say that not being attracted to her was an understatement? Listen, okay? If I was Christine, I would have jumped across the little table separating us. And I won't say what I would have done, but you can imagine. Hammers, all I'm saying. <laughs> Cody saying he's disgusted by a woman because of the way she eats nachos. Like maybe you need to go to therapy, do some evaluating self-exploration on that one. Then, towards the end of 2022, two more sister wives jumped ship. Cody Brown was asked to address his relationship status with Janelle Brown in a sneak peek for the upcoming sister wives one-on-one -on -one special. I'm separated from Janelle and I'm divorced from Christine Brown. And Janelle also confirmed. Janelle has made it pretty clear to me that she's enjoying her life without me. And good for her. And she should be. I saw a Instagram post from Christine the other day. She's been working out. 
She put on a cute little outfit. She went on a date. And good for her. I think if we both really sat down, we'd look at each other and say, really? We've been separated for several months. While Janelle and Cody have been together for almost three decades, their relationship- Kiwi strawberry, it's very good began to crack during 2020. And Janelle refused to follow Cody's strict rules, telling him to F off <laughs> during an intense argument about their holiday 2020 plans. And I want you to just respect that, okay? Yeah, f off. <laughs> I'm just like, what, what the f Sorry. He wouldn't spend Christmas with their kids together. He was only gonna spend Christmas with Robin's kids. I don't even recognize this family or whatever like i like i don't know something has really changed for me good the dynamic between the couple declined in the months that followed the brown's religion apostolic united brethren or aub looks down on men who leave their wives far more harshly than women who leave their husbands so it's believed that cody was pushing away his wives on purpose so they would leave him instead of him having to leave. He's been making some noise, like even last year. I mean, he's like, been abusing them for a long time. From like season one, episode one, he's been abusing these women and manipulating them. Like, damn, the fact that he's been playing this long game to get them to divorce him is so... We gotta move on to hell three at this point. Hell two's not even enough now. Like, look, plural marriage, is standing in the way of my personal progress. He said that to us one time. And then after he separated from Mary Brown, Cody Brown and his sister wives are no more, at least seemingly for now. Mary Brown confirmed only a little while after Janelle confirmed her separation that she has also ended her 32 year marriage to Cody Brown. While the show was continuing for now, three out of the four women have left Cody, leaving him with only one remaining wife, Robin Brown. Mary Brown said Cody- That's what he's wanted since the beginning anyway. He only ever loved Robin made the decision to end their marriage. During the TLC interview, Mary is shown a clip of Cody Brown in which he says, I don't consider myself married to Mary. If she wanted to move on and marry another, she wouldn't get an argument from me. How is your relationship with Mary today? Well, Mary and I are in an amiable relationship, but we've been like literally separated for, oh, I would say four or five years. Neither of us see real value in the relationship. You, you don't want to be intimate with Mary right now. Is that still where things stand? Yes. And Mary said the pair never discussed their separation. M Mary, do you want to be intimate with Cody, but he doesn't want to be, or are you in the same place as him? Like, what's going on in your head? I think I want more of a relationship with him than we're having right now. Imagine thinking you're married to someone and then they do an interview or make like an Instagram post or something and basically say, yeah, if you wanna like move on and marry someone else, like that's fine. He I'm did these women so dirty, especially Mary, who he was first of all married to the longest, but also he mistreated her forever. And he was so homophobic to their queer child. Like she was getting nothing from that relationship. I'm glad it ended, but I feel bad for her. I'm cool with it. Like he just made the decision. I've never heard him say that to me. But Cody stated of his relationship with Mary, I didn't give up on Mary. It just turned out that the relationship was essentially unstable. I just didn't feel like it was tenable. It's not a functional relationship. We can get along, but we can't be together. And there were a lot of people who were critical of Cody's behavior through this entire separation process. He was telling Christine that she just walked away and gave up and that's wrong, while simultaneously walking away and giving up from Mary. Mary. Oh, he wants to work on it with Christine, but not me. He threw multiple temper tantrums, lashed out at his ex-wives. That's the reason I'm pissed off. And that's the reason I'm pissed off. That's not true. And it's yes, just I did. vomiting out of me. Man. Oh, just thinking about the, the ways in which 
this man should suffer. The unique and new inventions of systems of torture that should be applied to Cody Brown. I'm like a bot. Thank you so much for subbing for nine months. Our Twitch baby was born, dude. Just the knife in the kidneys over all these years. And the sacrifices that I made. The, sacri to love you. the sacrifices that I made. To love you. And he's talking to a person that he has admitted he never loved. That goatee is a crime against humanity. Everything about him is disgusting and despicable. The goatee. The, the hair. I mean, God, there was no hairstyle that worked for this man. Yo, mate, love in the comments. Say Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Wasted. And you are running away. That's not true. Put the on me. Hey. Oh, man. Same old. Ugh, I cannot believe. I, I cannot believe that I have done all this. To save you, to save truly, to save my children. I did not know. I did not know that it wouldn't harm them. Made them feel guilty, even degraded their appearance and said he never loved them. And as of December- His favorite wife called them all fat. Of 2022, Robin is the only wife remaining. Though Robin has said that Cody's issues with his other marriages have put a strain on their relationship. Cody is- Wouldn't it be crazy if he'd, all of his other wives left him so that he could be with his bottom bitch and then she left him too? <laughs> that would be so funny. I don't want good things to happen to Robin. I think she's a bad person, but I think it would be really funny if he was left with zero wives at the end of all of this. Now questioning me left and right about things that I thought he knew about me, like he's struggling to trust everybody. It's sort of that be careful what you wish for thing. Many fans thinking that Robin was a big contributing factor in Cody's wives becoming more estranged from him. But now that she's the only wife, She's kind of going, oh crap. Now I have to deal with all of his shiz. <laughs> right now, I'm living right through that because Cody is having issues with some of his other relationships and it's making our relationship really, really hard. When she said she was leaving, she Robin took lived her best life when she got her dad's paid in a house when she joined the Brown family, yeah. A really big dream from me. It was... I always imagined us, you know, when we were older, sitting there with our grandkids and just getting that sisterhood that we saw some of these older women in our church have. Mm -hmm. Do and you feel like Christine robbed you of that? Yes, she took it away. She took that away. You were rotten to her from the jump. You were never gonna be friends. They hated your ass and rightfully so. I'm exhausted. Like, who cares? If you're not with me, you're against me. F off, you know? I'm just like that way, Cody said about the split. I'm exhausted. Like, who cares? If you're not with me, you're against me. F off. You know, I'm just like that way. Yeah, you seem to be that way and handling it really well. That's a very weird response to divorce. <laughs> to three, three back-to-back -back divorces. F off. If you're not with me, you're against me. When's a good time to come to Chicago? May. May would be a good time to come, I think. It's the weather's usually really tame in May. It's not too hot. June, May or June. July, August is miserably hot. All the other months of the year, it's way too fucking cold. I'd say May or May, June or September. Good times. Truly. <laughs> On an episode of The Sister Wives, the splintered family had a very heated family meeting. I do think you, Cody, focus like you're like, oh my God, nobody wanted to be together. And to be honest with you, I really don't know if I want to do the work. And then this is exactly what I was afraid of with Christine leaving. It basically feels like I'm being forced to choose between my children and this group. I don't feel like my children are welcome. A lot of people have questioned if the women that are separating from Cody will remain on the show, but Christine Brown has continually confirmed that she will remain on Sister Wives. 
I am definitely not leaving Sister Wives. This is, in fact, the set in my home. I'm so excited. And now the Sister Wives plot will follow Christine in her own state, in her own home, on her own terms as she navigates her single life. I didn't know life could be simple. I didn't know that my life was complicated. I didn't know my previous life was complicated. And now when I look back on it, I'm like, oh my gosh. I get to live life for me. I, I'm just done putting up with people who I don't need in my life. Oh my God. I feel good. I feel good for her. Like, like you don't deserve all the bullshit that you've gone through. And I do have a lot of sympathy for, for especially the women because the, I mean, predominantly for the children, but also for the women because they were raised into this cult, particularly Christine, who was raised in polygamy royalty or whatever. Um, but because they didn't really know any other way of being, they were sort of groomed into this lifestyle. So to see them come out the other side and like realize that it was not for them, that there was abusive. It's nice. It's like watching people who get help and live better after leaving a cult. It is a cult. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have, I don't allow people into my life who are not going to be kind and they're not going to be good. I only allow good people in my life. Which I think will be an incredibly fascinating avenue for the show to explore. Thank you for the biddies. After being in what many people see as a polygamist cult, how are these women going to adjust to normal life? Will they date? How will they handle dating and living completely independently? And now that Cody Brown is down to one wife, it sounds like the patriarch is even rethinking his relationship with Robin. Cody Brown is said to be content in his union with Robin Brown, but might be taking some time to rethink if marriage is suitable for him. And Cody has been reportedly grieving the loss of his family, but fans feel that he is the only one to blame for all of this. A source close to the family spoke with In Touch, sharing that Cody's life is currently a mess. While the father of 18 is happy with Robin, the insider questioned how long that feeling would last. Robin is apparently fine with the other wives exiting, but also seems to be questioning her relationship with Cody. It's hard to be a plural wife when your husband has a wife leaving him plural marriage isn't all beer and skittles that's not a thing beer and skittles that's not a thing huh when i'm trying to describe something as good i don't usually say it's beer and skittles is that a good combo i don't know you know it's 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 not it's a game in england oh i'd never heard of that before for a man I mean, there's a different burden that I don't want to sit here and mansplain to you. It's, it's like a pool game. Interesting. Mormons have pie and beer day. It's like, uh, it's like beer and cheese curds. Just obvious that it's difficult. My Wisconsin side is bleeding through. I'm gonna share your husband? Why would you do that? All of this drama definitely Skier made and for Biddles. entertaining TV. And that's the reason I'm pissed off. And it seems that though Cody Brown's life and family is falling apart, the Browns' fame, success, and businesses could actually be boosted heavily from the divorce. And the drama- I mean, yeah, like them getting divorced is what got me back into the show. I hadn't watched it since, probably since I was in high school. Cause I watched it all through, probably right all through until I graduated high school. And then I fucking, I stopped. But then during the pandemic, when all of the family drama was going on, I was like, "Ooh, OK, let me. Let me get back into some of this. <laughs> Are we sure Cody isn't the product of some freaky Friday situ situation? His I think he's just a freak. I used to smuggle Skittles back with me to Germany. I would pack empty carry on the fill with Skittles in the U.S. <laughs> and the entertainment that comes with it all. People are fascinated by things that are the most relatable. Divorces, breakups, and family drama are very relatable topics. On top of that, those- <laughs> My mom asked if I was streaming tonight and I was like, yeah, I'm actually, uh, 
I'm I'm actually talking about Sister Vibes, and she just texted me. I'm so glad Janelle and Christine left that ass. Robin can have them all to her crybaby self. And so that is Mom Vanna's insight into Sister Wives. And I must say, bars. Bars, Mom, you got it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm texting my mom now. I'll play the video. I've been following the family for years are going to be most engaged during this time that the family is falling apart. It's literally ratings gold for the network and for the family with more publicity and engagement now than they've ever had. The TLC show Sister Wives has been wildly successful, which leads me to wonder how financially successful have the Browns been from their reality show and other business ventures that they- uh, This has actually been the predominant question in my mind since we started watching this video yesterday. How much have they made from this? Done from the fame and success they've gained from the show. According to a PR expert, sister wives Christine, Janelle, and Mary Brown can all make considerably more money per year since they're split from Cody. Whoa. According to David Johnson, CEO of- <laughs> Oh, gee, Mom Vanna is straight savage and I love it. I'm telling you, I get my, <laughs> my quippy nature from my mom. We used to watch these shows together and she would just tear the, the people in them apart. <laughs> Don't get my mom started on Little People Big World. <laughs> Strategic Vision PR group, the three ex-wives could bring in two million annually each. David told the US Sun that the trio's extra income could come from brand partnerships, sponsorships, selling products, and more. The PR expert explained that it's often a plus to be single when brands partner with celebrities when the audience is health and fitness related. Apart from airing the Browns family drama on the hit TLC show, the wives have been bringing in income in other ways with a lot of quote-unquote side hustles. Mary has been selling LuLaRoe clothing for years. Janelle also has her lifestyle brand Strive with Janelle, and both she and Christine are heavily involved in Plexus marketing for weight loss. My mom wants you to know that Cody took all of their money to pay off Robin's debts, which is true. I think you might be watching, Mom, but... um. They uh they were talking about how Janelle sold everything she had, her home, and went to uh gave it to Robin so Robin could buy her dream house and then lived in a trailer on their property. I mean, for the love of God, these people deserve nothing. At the same time that things are slowly crumbling for the Brown family, fans of the TLC show are also getting tired of the constant pushing of multi-level marketing companies on their social media platforms. Multi-level marketing companies are known to be- Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be right back. I have to go to the bathroom, but I'll play the video, so just be a second predatory and it's fairly known that 99% of sellers don't make money at all which is why MLMs are often compared to pyramid schemes only those at the very top are making money and they're relying on recruiting other people in order to keep their income going and the people at the bottom are just losing money since oftentimes they're told to continue buying and buying and buying up product to once again put more money in the pockets of those at the top so which of the sister wives are involved with MLM companies? Well, Plexus is the most popular MLM associated with the sister wives cast and Janelle and Christine are involved with them. They use their personal Instagram accounts as well as two they run specifically for peddling products called Secret to Self Care and Life with Health and Happiness. Both have well over 30,000 followers. Plexus is an MLM that sells dietary- Jay Hawker, thank you for gifting a sub to my mom. Also, quickly. Most famously- 
It's almost my mom's birthday. So can everyone in the chat say happy birthday, Mom Vanna? Her birthday's in two days. Which I will say happy birthday to you <laughs> on your birthday, Mom. But everyone else say it. Thank you. Their meal replacement shakes and drinks that are marketed to help people lose weight. Well, they were selling weight loss supplements. That's so funny. They're already in a cult, and then on top of that, they're doing MLM scans. <laughs> Happy birthday to Ray Bomb. <laughs> I kind of love that. <laughs> what makes Plexus is it's just so on brand for them to be involved in fucking MLMs especially predatory is that they take advantage of people suffering from health conditions like PCOS. MLMs, Morbid's losing money. <laughs> looking at Janelle, her daughter Maddie, and Christine's Plexus accounts seems to show that they push the idea that these products can help you lose weight, which is not rooted in science. These products are not FDA approved, and there seems to be no proof they help with weight loss or health conditions. Okay, I will say this. These women, I am certain, received some of the worst education possible. This is why Utah is number one in fraud scams. Speaking of Utah fraud scams, Real Housewives Salt Lake City, one of the housewives defrauded elderly folks and is going to jail for it. 2022, she started healing it in 2023. She's coming for what's hers. This is a year of alignment. And she's not letting anyone stand in her way. But I think that these women would be highly susceptible to like MLMs. Um, <laughs> I love that comment. I'll never support an MLM, but I'll always support your journey. <laughs> I do think that these women would be easily susceptible to MLMs because like I said, you know, they were raised in Mormonism. They went to like Mormon schools. I don't think that they got very good education. I don't think any of them went to college. Maybe Janelle, but I don't think any of the other ones did. Mary Brown, on the other hand, is loyal to LuLaRoe. Both Mary and Christine have been active with the legacy. Yeah, especially consi- Mom, you're right. Christine and- My mom said Christine and Janelle need to get real jobs and stop ripping off the public. Leave all that shady shit behind with Cody and Robin. Especially because Janelle had a job. She was a real estate agent. She was the only- She was the primary breadwinner for that family for a long time. She has qualifications. She has a certification to be a licensed real estate agent. It's a good time to have that job. Get back into it. Company LuLaRoe. And it's sad because they're taking advantage of their fans who will end up losing money in the multi-level marketing business model. If you didn't know already, Lula Rowe rose to infamy with the shocking documentary Lula Rich, which I highly recommend watching, and really showed the truth and toxicity behind the MLM company. While the documentary was eye-opening for many, Mary has decided to stay loyal to the brand. She made a post in November praising the company and its owners, Deanne Brady and Mark Stidham. You had a shout out on 2 IT, right? I know I did. I was in the document earlier i was talking with anna about about what was going on weeks ago i was in florida for lula Rowe leadership training i had the privilege of rubbing shoulders with these two amazing humans feeling their spirit and seeing firsthand the love and compassion they have for their family of retailers and it seems that my sister's making a documentary about mlms partially inspired by lulu rich good shit that's really interesting whenever it comes out you'll have to let us know so we can watch it that's cool as hell good for your sister Mary has no plans of leaving LuLaRoe anytime soon. Her Instagram Bye, account Canadian. is still filled with her LuLaRoe work. I find the sister wives involvement in MLMs to be kind of ironic because many people believe the sister wives are in a cult and many believe MLMs are a cult. 
so it kind of makes sense that the sister wives would fall into involvement in MLMs. But of course, most of the sister wives' money comes from starring on the TLC show since 2010. Each sister wives' net worths are higher than you might think. According to Celebrity Net Worth, Mary is worth an- I will say those websites are bullshit. So take what's about to be said with a grain of salt. Those celebrity net worth websites are nonsense. Because I now I'm friends with people who are on listed on those websites. And I know that those websites are deeply inaccurate. It seems like they want their business networks to succeed. They should stop giving up halfway on the marriage pyramid, though. If you have four wives, each of those four those wives should have four husbands. Then each of those husbands should have four wives, etc. Before you know it, your downstream is basically automatic. That's awesome. <laughs> Rivana has a net worth of $3.7 million. $3.7. $3.7. Might be, might be vaguely accurate. Estimated total of four hundred thousand. I have a negative net worth, just to be clear. I have a I have like a negative a hundred thousand dollars. Thousand. The profit stems from her starring in Sister Wives, selling items on LuLaRoe, and running Lizzie's Heritage Inn, a bed and breakfast in her family home in Utah. Although it's not been revealed exactly how much Mary makes as a trainer for LuLaRoe, Glassdoor reports that a trainer makes over 77000 a year. As for Mary's bed and breakfast, which she began in 2017, she's charging her customers 250 I was going to be impressed that you had a positive net worth. Funnily enough, I paid off all my credit card debt. <laughs> but I did it with my student loan refund money. So my debt didn't actually go down. <laughs> Just moved into some a different, you know, <laughs> form of debt with a much better interest rate that I probably will never have to pay off if things continue the way they've been. <laughs> Yeah, I just consolidated my debt to Moello. And $300 a night, depending on the room. In November of 2022, Mary hosted a retreat at Lizzie's Heritage Inn, and the prices varied from $4,500 to $6,400, which is a lot to be charging people. And the last way Mary earns extra income is through cameo videos for her fans for $150 and selling business related recordings for $420. Janelle is reportedly worth $400,000 as of 2022. Janelle has reportedly accumulated those funds from starring in Sister Wives, previously running the Browns online store and blog named My Sister Wife's Closet. Her fitness company- Honestly, this is the American dream. Debt consolidation. <laughs> drive with Janelle and participating in her Plexus MLM called Life with Health and Happiness. On the site, she charges her customers who request an appointment $75 for advice and guidance on their fitness journey, but there's no info about exactly how much their Plexus MLM project has made since opening the company. Subscribe now for more debt tips and tricks. Use your debt. Use use your your fucking your loans to pay off your debt. Before Janelle's on Hi Dad online business ventures, she was a real estate agent in 2013 to make ends meet while she and her family lived in Nevada. Christine has a reported net worth of 400000 Christine has made- I get two more subs before this ends? Made this money through being on the show Sister Wives, being a published author, a salesperson for Plexus and LuLaRoe, and making specialized cameo videos. In 2012, Christine published a- Viral, thank you for subbing with Prime! One more sub before this ends. I appreciate that. 21 months book titled Handmade. just a reminder if you have a amazon prime subscription you can sub to a channel on twitch every month for free zero dollars zero dollars you can do it for free if you're on a uh, browser if you're on mobile close it open up a browser don't get tricked by mobile also mobile subscriptions are a dollar more oh chef thank you so much for giving a sub to cave dwelling raised the barns of Montana. As a LuLaRoe retailer, although Christine didn't disclose how much she profits from her sales- Oh, easy bake oven, thank you for gifting a sub, Oh. 
I wonder if anyone like makes bank on cameo. It always seems to me that like their rate is more or less determined by their existing wealth, which would essentially make it a bit of extra spending money. I don't think that anyone's like getting rich off cameo, but I know, you know, people do all right on cameo. It's reported that the retailer can make 38,000 to 56,000 a year. There's been no- Oh, thank you so much for subbing. Details on how much Christine has made in Plexus. Be Scallon? Did I get that right? As for Cameo, Christine charges her fans a variety of prices. Including you know one of the guys that runs Cameo? I have a subscription now. <laughs> $40 for a personalized video, $120 for a live video call, and $245 Brian. All right, that's easier. <laughs> for a business video. Celebrity Net Worth says Robin has profited $600,000 since starting in Sister Wives. The other ventures Robert has participated in is selling items on the joint website My Sister Wife's Closet. I thought that that was defunct, like it never took off. I remember that was such a huge plot line for a while when I was like in high school and then it was never, it never materialized into anything. Publishing books and running the family blog. In regards to books, Robin has written at least three projects. This woman hasn't written a single book, all right? You can't convince me that this woman has written a book. <laughs> including two children's novels, Disney's Muppet Babies, Super Fabulous, and Evan's Turning Seven. As for their combined earnings, Cody and his four wives, or former wives, can each reportedly earn 25,000 to 40,000 per episode for their roles in TLC's Sister Wives. The group also turned their life story into a New York Times best-selling book titled Becoming Sister Wives, the story of an unconventional marriage. The story of a marriage that fell apart, right? Robin is sitting and crying in her sister wife's closet. <laughs> well, Cody's yelling at her from the other room. 2012. So right. what started as a random reality TV series to advocate for polygamy turned into a multitude of business avenues for the Browns. But what do their children think about the career and lives their parents have had? Do your kids plan on living the polygamous lifestyle? So far, they're not planning on it. They you know, all have their choice. Really yeah. One of the most fascinating aspects of the sister wife. I remember it being like very dramatic about whether or not the kids were going to practice plural marriage. And I remember watching and like feeling like a personal victory every time one of the kids was like, I'm not having a plural marriage. <laughs> saga are the children that mary christine and janelle have had with cody and how those i am surprised that this video didn't touch on the fact that mary only had one kid and she was so mom you might know did robin ever have the baby for mary she didn't right i can't remember <laughs> because that was like a huge plot line for so much of the show was that like mary her child was the oldest and she was my mom just sex with me. No, she didn't. Okay. I didn't think so. Because, but that was like a huge part of the fucking show was like that Mary really wanted a baby and Robin was going to give her a baby. And then she like, I guess never did. <laughs> Those children have turned out and what their perspectives are on their family. Cody and Mary Brown's kid, Leon Brown, age 27. After five years of marriage, the pair welcomed their first and only child together, Leon Brown, in 1995. And though Mary was raised in polygamy and was part of a plural marriage herself, she tried to create a different culture for Leon, who came out as transgender and queer in June of 2022. In also, that was a huge... I mean, if you watched the show, you knew for a while that, that, that their child was, was queer. But, like, Cody was super homophobic to his kids. Not only was he an absent father, when he was present, he was bigoted towards his children. <laughs> July of 2022, Mary celebrated Leon turning 27 with a touching tribute on Instagram. Happiest of birthdays to my miracle, my always amazing Leo the Lion, she wrote. Know you are forever loved by me at Leo in the Mountains, and I'm honored and blessed to be your mom. I love you. Don't it's get me started on how they tricked Mary into divorcing Cody so he could marry Robin. Mom, I wish you had been here yesterday because I was going on and on about it. <laughs> 
because they showed the clip where they're like, oh, it was Rob, it was Mary's idea. I was like, no, it wasn't. That was not her idea. <laughs> like, you, I watched this show. I was 12 years old, sitting in my mom's bed, watching the show every episode, every week. I know that that wasn't Mary's idea. <laughs> and the fact that there was a court in this country that was willing to give Cody the ability to adopt children, knowing how messy his life was and how unstable his finances were. Ugh. Important to note the brown children. Mom Vanna is deep in the lore. I was saying, I've been saying, I've been saying. <laughs> My mom and I used to watch this every week. Sure, it was so he could adopt Robin's kid. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right? It was so shady. Including Leon, have stated that Mary hasn't always. And what about your, your 18 other damn kids? <laughs> you don't seem to give a crap about them been the most supportive parent and that there's been many rough patches throughout their childhood especially when leon came out your dad talked about the importance of reciprocating your mom's feelings mm -hmm. what were you thinking in that moment i was just just feeling really hurt by her actions um and going through all of that just kind of made me feel like she didn't really care about me i had to come to a place where i realized it wasn't about me to be able to kind of move forward Leon is engaged to their partner, Audrey Chris, who came out as transgender in December 2021. Okay, um, I'm gay. Are you serious? Are you really? Yeah. It's one of those things that you kind of always know, but growing up in such a religious place was really hard because I was constantly told, you know, this is bad. Um, it's a sin. So it was just kind of like I had this uh, genuine having to come out to your family on live or on television is so deeply fucked. Like that's disturbing to me. Like having to have this very you know personal moment where you don't know what the response is going to be because you know that your family doesn't care for the gays, and then have millions and millions of people watch that. God, that's so, that's so traumatizing. I feel bad for them. Like, that's messed up. No, no one should have to go through that moment on TV, okay? You're growing up of being gay. Cody and- They are non-binary. But at the time, they still identified as a woman, so they were coming out as a lesbian. But they are, they use they, them pronouns, and they are non-binary. Janelle Brown's kids. Logan Brown, 28 years old, obtained a bachelor's degree in kinesiology and exercise science and married his now wife, Michelle Petty, in October of 2022. According to Cheat Sheet, he has never been interested in polygamy and is no longer a member of the Mormon church. Madison Brown, 27. The couple's second child and first daughter, Madison, who goes by Maddie, attended Utah State University, but later dropped out after getting engaged to her boyfriend, Caleb Brush, who she married in June of 2016. Caleb told people the pair weren't planning on living a plural marriage. Hunter Brown, 25. Oh, I know you could have found a better picture of this kid. <laughs> Oh, they did him dirty. Shame on parents if they made her come out on TV for the ratings. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like part of the production, you know, for views or whatever. But they knew that that person was gay. I remember watching and knowing that they were gay. So like having to have a moment where they come out and say it in front, like on camera, just nasty. Nasty. attended the United States Air Force Academy and later moved to Baltimore to attend nursing school and obtained his master's degree from the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing in May of 2022. Garrison Brown, 24. Janelle and Cody's fourth child son, Garrison, is a part of the National Guard. He also stepped back from his family, their show, and their faith. How do you, I love the idea of stepping back from your family and I respect that so much. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs> Y'all are toxic. I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> I, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> he has even joined a church that opposes polygamy. During the 2015 Tell All special, he stated- But I need to know where he was on January 6th because he's giving a vibe. Garrison, where were you on January 6th, 2021? 
one's enough for me. Gabriel Brown 21. Gabriel, who goes by Gabe, has had his ups and downs with his father over the years. In a December 2022 oh. episode of Sister Wives, <laughs> Gabe got emotional during a confession. Oh my god, this is the kid who Cody forgot his birthday, his 21st birthday. As he recalled when Cody forgot his birthday during a phone call they had in October. October oh. rolls around, specifically October 11th, my birthday. Um, and dad calls me. And okay, I, anyone here watch Alec Gunter because he talks exactly like Alec Gunter. We have a small discussion about how bad my COVID was. I shouldn't have done this, but I did anyway. Um, I didn't remind him that it was my birthday because what's up with all the bad hair? Genetic. I wanted to see if he remembered. And he didn't. Oh, poor kid. Savannah Brown, 18. Janelle and Cody's sixth and youngest child, Savannah, is very close with her mom and also regularly spends time with her larger blended family, including her half-sister, Truly, daughter of Cody and Christine. Cody and Christine Brown's kids, Aspen Brown, 27. Christine and Cody welcome their first There's daughter. There's 18 kids. Aspen on March 14th, 1995, and married her husband Mitch Thompson. Ooh, no, where was he on January 6th? Okay. <laughs> Cody, where were you? Robin. Now, Robin, the people need to know, Robin. Where were you on January 6th, 2021? Because I I got questions. <laughs> in June of 2018. The couple said they have no intention of welcoming sister wives into their family. Mikelty Brown, age 26. Bro, they gave her, they gave these kids some effed up names. <laughs> and they did not they did not give them normal names. In 2016, Mikelty married Antonio Padron. I'm not going to live polygamy, Mikelty said during She looks just like her mom or her mom's Christine, right? She looks just like Christine. Or is this Chanel? No, no. These are Janelle's kids? That's weird because she looks like Christine. All special. I don't think that's for me. I don't think I could ever live up to what my parents have been able to do. Peyton Brown, age 24. Peyton joined the National Guard in 2019. And in February 2022, he posted a TikTok that appeared to throw shade at Cody's wife, Robin. In the oh. video, he wore a shirt that said, what does the nanny do? Seemingly referencing Thanks, an mom. earlier comment from his mom, Christine, who questioned why okay, Robin- Okay, yeah, that, the talk did it look exactly like Christine though. Was able to hire a nanny during the pandemic when Cody's protocols prevented the family. I will say a bunch of Christine's kids are on TikTok talking mad shit about Cody and Robin. And I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm definitely here for it. From seeing each other. What does the nanny do? So I got this package in the mail and it doesn't matter. The package isn't super important, but it's kind of just like, <laughs> Hayden also revealed in December 2021 that he had no interest in practicing polygamy during a Q So so far there are zero kids going for polygamy. on his Instagram stories. When asked if he would consider the lifestyle, he responded, "No, I chose not to a long time ago." Gwendolyn Brown 21. In December 2022, Gwendolyn announced her engagement to her girlfriend of I was going to say this woman is gay in the face. She's got to be gay. <laughs> Like, she's visibly gay. <laughs> Almost nine months. I'm the daughter of Cody and Christine. And they're, you know they're lesbians because they're getting married after only nine months. <laughs> they moved in together after the, after the first date. And here I'll be kind of recapping my experience in each episode. How can you see that someone is gay with a, with a well-trained eye? My experience is kind of unique as an autistic bisexual woman, especially from a polygamist family, and especially as a subject of a reality television show. Like her brother Peyton, Gwendolyn has been outspoken about her feelings towards Cody's fourth wife, Robin, in a YouTube video that showed her reacting to the second episode of Sister Wives' 17th season, Gwendolyn said of Robin, I don't really like her as a person. I do feel less about Robin from watching this, but I feel like that's not very fair from me because I don't really like her as a person. Gwendolyn also posted a photo on Instagram with the caption, y'all, I'm not going to be a sister wife, along with two school emojis, <laughs> clarifying that 
She. I don't think anyone no- had any misgivings. I don't I think we were all sure that that wasn't happening. I heard we were raiding here. Who's raiding here? Intentions in joining a polygamist family. Gwendolyn also created a Patreon account. Oh, TYT? Where she's been spilling all I heard t- I had a little shout out on the show. I didn't just hear it, I saw it on the production document. TYT, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Raiders with two Y's. Hi, everybody. We are just fin. Can I play the intro song? No, but I'm just sorry. We're finishing up a documentary or not a documentary, but like a a long video. We're almost done, but it's a video about sister wives. It's really good. Also, after this, I'm going to be on Matt Binder's show. So make sure that you check that out. Marley, baby, thanks for the hundred biddies. Also, my mom might be watching. And oh, now that there's more people here, my mom's birthday is in two days. So if you just got here, say happy birthday, Bob Vanna tea about her family the two days of sister wives it was a long video darth also thanks so much for subbing for five months year old revealed that most of her family members realized they were in a cult which is why no one practices polygamy isabel brown 19 years old is cody and matt vinder on twitch on youtube also yes with them all thank you everybody we know ray is the pause champ okay i got this video is an hour and 20 minutes and I've gotten through it in under four hours so far. So I think I deserve praise for that. That's a new record for me. Usually when I watch videos, I pause every minute. <laughs> Christine's fifth. Thank you, everybody, for the, the happy birthday wishes to my mom. Child. In September. Of- also, I think my dad's also watching. So I can just want to say hi to my dad. <laughs> 2020, Isabel underwent major surgery to correct her scoliosis, which Christine later revealed was the final straw. Pause that- game strong, but got nothing on Papa Cedar. Yeah, he's the original. Made her leave her marriage after Cody declined to Dad join Bono, them yeah. to the operation. Wearing the daytime brace is hard. Okay, this was probably the most fuck one of the most fucked up things about this. So this girl, the daughter, had scoliosis, and Cody, the dad, refused to go to her surgery. He refused to be in the hospital to support her. He wasn't there when she woke up. She was asking for him. (laughs) Um, Because I look bigger, and I can't do as much, and I can't do as much, and it's hard emotionally. I don't think I would consent to surgery unless I thought it was threatening her life. The concern is, is if it's not under 30, by the time she's done growing, Doesn't she matter. will need surgery. It's, it's threatening her self-confidence. It's all just rhetoric. I think his... Listen, I'm just saying, in a video game, in Minecraft, me and all my friends are going to get hammers <laughs> pay Cody a visit. In a Minecraft, in a video game. Priorities are little screwed up. Isabel told the sister wives cameras through tears of her father's Dad Vaughn has a big smile on his face and says hi to everyone. Oh, thank you everyone for being so sweet to my parents. I feel so bad for his daughter. He has the worst relationships with all 18 of his children. Well, not all 18 because he likes Robin and apparently has a good relationship with her kids. But he like refused to see his kids during COVID. Update, Cody is an asshole and the man involved slash married with the sister wives. Yes, thank you. So for anyone who doesn't know, Cody is the dad. He had four wives. Now he only has one because three of them came to their senses and left him. Vision. She missed you. It was hard. You couldn't be there. It was hard for her. I know. I'm sorry. You're not sorry, though. If you were sorry, you would have been there. If you gave a singular crap about your daughter and supporting her, you would have been there. You know who was there after I had my surgery? My mom and my dad. After I broke my leg and had surgery, they were both there. Hassan got poop socked today? What does that mean? I was okay. I was fine, surprisingly. The doctor was shocked I was there by myself. There's no going back. But I wish I could have been there. And it's a real regret. And so it has me going back in time wishing. I love I- the shade of being like, even the doctor was like, where the hell is your husband? <laughs> I had to 
done things differently. Truly Brown, who's 12 years old and a minor, so I will be blurring her face. When Truly was just three years old, she was rushed to the hospital due to acute kidney failure and dehydration, and her road oh, to yeah. recovery was documented on the TLC show. Truly, could I be coming home? I think she has at least another nine days. Nine days. Is this unique to polygamous marriages or do an equal number of monogamous couples have selfish dads and her mom? I think the issue that's unique here is that the kids in the other marriages could see him spending time and being like a, a father to the kids of Robin, but not to them. So I think they experience, you know, unique trauma in that regard. So they see their dad being a dad to their half siblings or their some of their step siblings. But they have to live with the feeling that they do not receive that sort of attention or love from their father. And, you know, what does that make you feel like? It makes you feel like, why am I not good enough? Why are Robin's kids your favorite? Why don't you care about me? Why don't you remember my birthday, for God's sakes? <laughs> also, you have to see him, like, disregard your mom and choose another woman over your mom, despite the fact that he's still married to your mom. So you're also growing up feeling like, why is my mom not good enough? Why do you only care about Robin? What about us? Is this real life? No, this is a real, it's reality TV. So it's following a real family. Until she can come home. They did dialysis and they cleaned out her, her blood and everything and made it better. So that her kidneys could have a break. After Christine and Cody's separation, the exes disagreed over custody of their daughter, Truly, since Truly's still a minor. With Cody telling Christine he wanted to- In what universe would Cody have any right to that baby? Where the hell were you? You did not give a crap about this baby for the last 12 years. You don't care about her now. Split 50-50. What about Truly? I think Truly's gonna be fine. She'll miss everybody, of course, and it's gonna be hard and taking her from Cody. Oh, no, you can't take her from me. Oh, yes, she can. And she should. It's worse than just that because guaranteed one of those kids thinks their mother was neglected because they weren't good enough of a child to love. Yeah, I mean, you just have to, it's, it's all these complicated feelings that they're going to have to work through for the rest of their lives. You know, of inadequacy, of blaming themselves. When in reality, the truth is just that Cody is a dick. He's a bad guy. He sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's a bad person. That's it. At 13, the kid's opinion becomes important legally too. Yeah, and I think the kid is going to recognize that my dad's never been there for me. My mom's been in my corner the whole time. Cody should just admit he doesn't care about his kids and move on. I would be a lot less pissed if he did. Good news. I remembered I heard about BRD and USA to a TTC courts and favoring women way more than they used to, to, used to do. Yeah, it's, it's been a long journey. Because we'll have to have a show. Should I push my daughter into band or choir? I was in orchestra. I loved it. Um, but I wouldn't push them into it. If they want to do it, then they should do it. Custody will have to be 50-50. Well, how? He get a bad 50-50 time with us the whole time we lived here. The children seem like wonderful and well-adjusted people in society, which is impressive considering most of them feel they grew up in a cult. Mary, Christine, and Janelle undoubtedly did a wonderful job in raising their kids, despite the struggles they had in their polygamist marriage. The Sister Wives was a reality show intended to advocate for polygamy and paint it as a harmless practice. But instead, the 17 seasons of The Sister Wives thus far ended up just showcasing all the problems of polygamy and exactly why it doesn't work. Now it'll be interesting to see how Mary, Janelle, Christine's, and even Robin's lives change from here and what their perspective- Oh, thank you so much for the thousand biddies. Eventually will be of their it's time the in their sister wives' marriage. Now that they will- My mom had to go because her internet shit out, but she said thank you to everyone for the birthday wishes. And my dad said hello to everybody and thank you for the love. 
have some time to integrate into society. And that's all for why The Sister Wives is the most dramatic show on TLC. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope this video was informative on everything that has gone on regarding The Sister Wives. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for making it to the end. That's us, chat. We did make it to the end. <laughs> and comment down below what you were doing while watching or listening to this video. I know so many people like doing chores or work or other activities while watching my video and I always like to hear. No, it's not my, my birthday. It's my mom's birthday in a couple days. I can barely believe it when I saw it. The mom did everything and the dad got all the rights. Oh my God. People were doing and I hope you're doing well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. She did a good job putting all of this together. I like that. What were you doing during this video? People are being productive while they're watching my videos. We're not. <laughs> not us. Okay, so like concluding thoughts on Sister Wives. I think it's really funny that the show ended up, you know, I mentioned this a couple times while we were watching it, but the intention behind the show was to make, to, to decriminalize polygamy. That was the explicit intent for creating the show, was to normalize views on polygamy and then decriminalize polygamy. And this family was supposed to be like a family that had it together. That could, to an extent they were successful. Polygamy was decriminalized in Utah, but like this family was supposed to be the model polygamous family and they self-destructed. I mean, three of his four wives left him. He has one life left, one wife left. He's in, he's in a monogamous marriage. Brian, thank you so much for gifting a sub. More like public accepted. Yeah, I suppose. But it didn't work. <laughs> I mean, I think most people tuned in to Sister Wives because they were fascinated by seeing, you know, a family that operates very differently than their, their own. But all that they ended up seeing was like the destruction of this family, ultimately. stretch a new group of five that's polygamist most families have issues i like the goal of the show but obviously most fans have issues also on a spectrum i think it's interesting you know i think that using I, because it's from a mormon perspective the way that polygamy works in the mormon church it's not like you know polyandry relationships like it's explicitly religious and it is very patriarchal and it's a cult. And a lot of these people who are in plural marriages within Mormonism are groomed into it. So if, if we want to have a conversation about, you know, um, you know, poly relationships, it's a really a different discussion from what the show is about. They're not as bad as the families on MILF Manor. Oh my God. No, not even close. It's hard to be as bad as the families on MILF Manor. Sorry, yeah, polyamory, not polyandry. Which is also different, but... The man owns his wives. Yeah, exactly. Mormonism came from Catholicism for a reason. Did it? That would actually surprise me. I would expect it to come from you know, like evangelical Christianity. I think it would be more similar to that. The Mormon type of poly polygamy seems to be a lot more about the man acquiring resources and servants than a family. Oh, I mean, that's what it is. They, they're, they're supposed to be deferential to their husband. It came from the prophet Joseph Smith. Oh, you're talking about MILF Manor. Will there be incest? Tune in next week to find out. That's literally, though, what's the hook of the show of MILF Manor. So for anyone unfamiliar, MILF Manor is a show where it's a bunch of older women who are looking to date younger men. The younger men are all of their sons. Which I'll say I pre correctly predicted on TYT a little bit back. 
Um, but it's really icky to me. <laughs> I think that they had like a competition where they had to feel up the boys' bodies and guess which one was their son. It's fundamentalist Mormons and they don't follow a lot of teachings of the main Mormon church. It's fascinating to see the differences. Those are cougars, not MILFs. Yeah, it is a little, it's, you know, we gotta, we gotta make that distinction between MILFs and cougars. I think the son grew up with covert incest. I mean, there is a lot of like, I've seen some really good videos about like weird dynamics between mothers and their sons. A little bit Oedipal. Sounds perfect for a spinoff with the gender swap. <laughs> that would never happen. You know, that would never happen. Dilf Manor. That could never happen. Breastfed to high school. Okay. Who is streaming? I'm I am going to raid because I am going to be on Binder Show in a couple minutes. Um, and I need to get my stuff set up for that. I'm gonna raid Allie's crying temporarily, but at 9 Eastern, 8 central so in like 10 minutes i'm gonna be on doomed with matt bender if you want to tune in on youtube or um uh or on twitch wherever you're viewing you're all on twitch now so either way i'll be on in a couple minutes we're gonna talk about andrew tate we're gonna talk about deep fakes um it, it i'll pull up the youtube really quickly otherwise it's just matt bender on twitch but his YouTube channel is also just Matt Bender. Here it is. Place that and then do my raid. There's the link. Have you seen the Netflix Stay Sweet and Obey thing? I haven't yet. I'll have to check that out. I fucked that up like six times. It's not invalid. <laughs> I'm spelling her name wrong. Is there two eyes? Yeah, there's two eyes. <laughs> Finally fucking got it. All right, everybody. But yeah, I'll be on in 10, 10 minutes if you want to check me out on Matt Bender's stream. Otherwise, go follow Allie. She's wonderful. Go give her some love. Um, so I'll see you soon on Bender Show. Bye.